Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we're checking out the Ride Prestige system triggers and sequencing in Planet Coaster. So the Ride Prestige system is as mysterious as the YouTube algorithm is, but at its heart it's just a set of calculations which allow you to manage your park based on ride popularity and age. It's often overlooked and while it isn't perfect, track rides I'm looking at you, Bruh. this doesn't have to be the case. If you get it right you can have a great time with it. So let's see how this works. So first up is the Coaster Prestige, and this is mainly based on the EFN rating. That's excitement, fear, and nausea. You'll need to stay in the green for as long as possible to generate the best ratings, and this can be checked either while the ride is testing or in the ride results panel. And you can get the best rating by keeping G-forces down, airtime up, and taking bends wider rather than tighter. Other factors such as the length of track, queue line decoration, triggers, and the scenery around the coaster also count. Essentially, the longer and better decorated the ride and its queue is, the better the rating is. But be aware that brake runs nerf the prestige even more so if they sit at the end of the ride waiting for the station to become free. Prestige for flat rides is very similar to coasters. It is also based on the EFN ratings, but this time it's generated by the sequence length, that's how long the ride is, the sequence actions, that's what the ride does, the queue line rating, and a base rating determined by the game under the hood. But we're going to look at sequences in more depth in a second. And lastly, we've got the track rides, but they are broken, like really broken. It works in a similar way to the coaster prestige, but it has some sort of a modifier to increase the rating based on the triggers rather than the EFN. So the more triggers that you've got, the higher the prestige. And just in case you were wondering, the perfect prestige rating for coasters is 800 or more, but the closer to 1000, the better. Your flat rides that are thrill based are around 800 and then 500 for your tamer rides, but good luck getting a track ride prestige below 1200. So yeah, that's a thing. Okay, so now you know how the ratings work, let's have a look at sequencing flat rides. Now you can control what a flat ride does by editing the sequences and this is found within the sequencing tab. Here you can change the length of the sequence by adding or removing an item or you can change what the sequence does by selecting a new one. Now most players overlook this feature but ultimately it changes the prestige score. However, be careful because there is a fine balance here. You will be punished by the game rating if you make the ride too intense, too spewy, too boring, too repetitive or too short. There isn't a perfect way to predict a score but I will leave a link in the description to Infinity's guide on the optimal ride sequences for rides based on how much you can charge for them. So this applies to both PC and console players but just a word of warning though some flat rides are not capable of high ratings and others are ridiculously overpowered but that's the game that's not you and the last piece of the puzzle are the triggers now these are effects that can be set off as the ride is operating and you can apply them to any ride in planet coaster the first thing to do is set up the effects around the ride you can tell what can be triggered as the item will have this little checkbox in the details window you can also have music and sound effects too, but you're going to need to place the speakers and select the sound if you want to have these. And then when you are ready, head to the ride window and add a trigger point. So when the front of the train passes over that point, even if it is travelling backwards, or the specific ride sequence starts, then the objects that you've selected will then play. You can choose the items that you want to trigger by selecting them and you can determine the order in which they play by altering the timers. This is in seconds and the minimum gap is 0.1 seconds. You can also slide the trigger along the track if you want to change the timings or if you're doing a flat ride you're going to need to add a time for this instead. Adding a trigger point is usually the only way that you're going to achieve a very high scenery rating. And guys if you can nail the trigger system you can achieve something like this amazing creation. Just a real quick note before we go on though, the game has got a ride aging system which acts as a modifier for the rating. A new ride gets a buff and an old ride gets a nerf until it reaches a certain age and then it recovers to the original prestige but is instead now called classic. You can turn the aging off in the game settings but not the prestige system itself. So, you've nailed the prestige for your ride and it's as good as it's going to get, but how much can you charge for each ride? Well, this is where you're going to need to leave realism at the door because there is a golden ratio for ticket prices and this is $3 per 100 rating. So, a 1000 rated coaster can charge $30. Be careful though because the more you charge for rides, the quicker your guests will run out of money and the more ATMs you're going to need. The game doesn't always promote ATM use. Some guests are just going to bounce around your park with no money 
until they're ready to leave. But this can hurt your park more than charging less for rides. So if you are at this point, you might want to consider having free rides and charging for entry instead. This is because guest happiness increases when riding rides and happy guests are more inclined to use ATMs if they need them. But a guest that's bouncing around the park complaining they've got no money are not riding rides and they're not going to be a happy guest. But that's it. Now you know everything there is to know about the prestige and sequences in Planet Coaster. You're welcome, Internet. You're welcome. <laughs>